Senator Sass, thanks for being with us. Matt, good to be here. I have to say that your Facebook post was freaking epic, and you really laid out the framework by which constitutional conservatives should be talking about this election and generally who we support. It's not about a king, it's about the rule of law. Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, the American experiment is extraordinary. We're incredibly blessed to live in the greatest nation the world's ever known, and it's because the Constitution is the best political document ever written, because it's a negative document. It doesn't think that government is the center of everything. It admits that government is only because the world is broken, and we don't believe might makes right, and the king isn't the guy that we want to save us. We want a constitutional republic where people come together to defend our natural rights. Yeah, and I think part of the part of the question people are struggling with after seven years of Barack Obama is are we are we just going to throw away the source code, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or are we going to look for someone that actually respects that? And I think some people are confused about that. I think so, too. And I want to say this clearly. I know, obviously, at CPAC, we're not talking particularly about presidential candidates. But um, I've been critical of Mr. Trump. He uses the word reign all the time. The American system doesn't want someone who reigns. We want someone who faithfully executes the laws, administers the laws in the executive branch. This is one third of the bra one, one branch out of three at the federal government, which isn't supposed to be the center of our life. And so as I've been critical of him, I've had the great opportunity to interact with many, many Trump supporters in Nebraska. As you know, I live in Nebraska and commute every week. And most of these people are great freedom-loving Americans, and they're so mad about Barack Obama that they want to reject that by screaming no really loudly, and they think Mr. Trump is the most effective way to do that. But when you push them and say, well, would Mr. Trump actually roll back the executive unilateralism of Barack Obama, all this unconstitutional way of governing, governing? they say, well, I don't think he would, but I really don't think he's going to win. I'm just doing this as a way to protest. I think our votes are more important than that. I do see, I don't know if you share this idea, but I see an upside in this sort of um, populist coming out against the broken Washington machine. And you're seeing young people to flock to Bernie Sanders, which is not a good thing. Right. You're seeing people flock to Donald Trump. Um, they got it half right. They know the system's broken, but they seem to want to abandon the rules that got us, the, the rules that made America so special, I think I think there's an opportunity to sort of backfill that with the values. Yeah, I think I think there is as well, but we got to backfill it quickly because we, we sit 50 years into an era of cultural amnesia. President Reagan used to say we're always only one generation away from the extinction of liberty in any republic because you have to actually teach it to the next generation. We've not been doing that for a long time. And let's face it, the Republican Party has been really vacuous. Um, you got to give Mr. Trump credit for this. He's waged a hostile takeover of an organization that was pretty rotten inside. And uh, there it needs to be a lot of rebuilding at the party level. But we need to be sure at the American level, we know what we want is a constitutional recovery, not just burning it all down. I've called Donald Trump sort of this giant Stay puff marshmallow man that is sort of breaking up the, the GOP establishment. And in some ways, they sort of earned that. But we have to get this right. One last question. You said that you absolutely won't vote for Hillary Clinton. You refuse to vote for Donald Trump because he's not a constitutional conservative. What does that third choice look like? I know we're speculating, but how does this play out? Right. I think it's really important to recognize that we're in the first week of March. We're not in the first week of November. And a lot of people are thinking of this as somehow an analog to 1992 and Ross Perot and a fracturing of the conservative half of the electorate. I don't think we're in 1992. I think we're in 1860, where you had a Whig party that was falling apart in ways that are somewhat analogous to some of the problems inside the Republican Party. And it seemed like the end of the world in late 1850 and early 1860. And ultimately what happened is we had four presidential candidates and we got Abraham Lincoln out of that. Yeah. And so I think we're eight months away from an election and I think the American people will given, be given a lot more choices than two fundamentally dishonest New York liberals, which are the front runners of the two major parties right now. Always hopeful. I appreciate Thanks, that. Matt. Thank you, Senator Sass.